remember what I shared many years ago? This is very popular already. I mean, uh, I've shared on uh, how Jesus would appear to uh, John, right? And when Jesus said in book of Revelation, I am Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the first and the last, okay? Now, he would have spoken what? To his fellow Jew, Hebrew, right? He would have said, I am Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew uh, alphabet, and I am Taf, the last letter, correct? Am I right? So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I have a whole message on that. Aleph Taf, amen? How is in the very first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1 1, Aleph Taf is there, okay? That he's the one that created. It's his signature, Jesus' signature. Amen? Like if I put JP, right? That's Joseph Prince. Okay, he put down there, first letter, last letter, he's telling you, I have the first word in your life and I have the last word. Thank God for doctors, but they don't have the final word. I do. I have the final word. I have the final word in your legal case. I have the final word, not your doctors, not the judge. I have the final word. You got to see that. Amen? He has the final word. And God can move in such a way, I'm telling you, I've seen cases where people expect longer period, shorten because he has the final word. I've seen people who don't deserve, get blessed. I've seen what God has done. And I'm here to tell you, church, he has the final word in your life. Okay? Get a second opinion. His. Amen? Okay, look at the Hebrew for the blessing. Hebrew reads from right to left. This shall stand to bless the people. Do you see Aleph Tav there? Do you see Aleph Tav? It's always untranslated. I asked a Jewish guy one time, many years ago, Why, what is this word? Oh, it's, a, it's a sign, it's a sign, he says. A sign of what? It's Jesus' signature. Amen? So in other words, when it comes to the blessing, before bless the people, our English Bible has blessed the people. In between, it tells you who is blessing. And because of whom, the blessing comes on the people. It's not keeping the law, it is Jesus. Because of Jesus, amen, the blessing comes on us. Can I have a good amen? Okay, now, you would have thought that there's only one Aleph Tav, right? Same verse on the blessing. You drop down, it says here, when you are come over or cross over Jordan, in between you have Aleph Tav. And I told you to keep that word in mind, cross over Jordan. What's that? When you cross over Jordan means you're no more on old ground, you're on new ground. You're no more on death ground, you're on resurrection ground. Remember when Israel crossed the river Jordan, God told them to take 12 stones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And God says, take them and put them on the other side and take the stones and replace it with the 12 stones you took. In other words, in Christ's death, Yarden means the, the river goes down into judgment. When Jesus was crucified, we were all the 12 tribes. All of us were crucified and we all died with Him. Our first man, our old man, that was the, uh, always giving us trouble, has been crucified. But with the, God doesn't stop there. God doesn't stop with death. When Jesus rose from the dead, amen. Now, the 12 stones are taken out and put on the other side. That means what? We all rose from the dead, from the uh, river of judgment with Him. That's what baptism is a picture of. We are all on resurrection ground. Just like Noah, when Noah went into the ark, the ark has three parts to it, amen? Represents Jesus' spirit, soul, and body. And the Bible says uh, you, will, you, will, you, will, you will cover it with asphalt. And the word cover is the same word for atonement. The work of atonement, to cover. Jesus covered our sins, all right? And more than that, Jesus removed our sins, amen? So it's a picture of redemption, a, a picture of atonement, right? There are no windows around the ark. God doesn't want people to see the destruction and all the filth and all the uncleanness and all that. God wants them to look up. There's only windows on top. To look up always. Look to the Lord. Amen. And then when the mount, finally when, when the Noah's ark rested, it rested on Mount Ararat. Arar in Hebrew means curse. Ararat means the curse is reversed. And the date that the ark rested is given to us. It's exactly the date by which they celebrate the Feast of First Fruits, the same date Jesus rose from the dead in the calendar. All right? In other words, when Jesus rose from the dead, He brought all of us in Him to resurrection ground. Sickness, poverty, the curse, the enemy can only affect people who are in the natural. We are not natural anymore. 
That's what the Bible says, act like you have been risen with Christ. You are a resurrected being. You're not going to die, you know. A Christian, if his heart stops beating, he falls asleep. He cannot die anymore. We have passed from death unto life. Death is behind us. Not only death behind us, the curse is behind us. The curse of poverty is behind us. Amen. The curse of sickness is behind us. Even if we are sick, we believe as He is right now resurrected. Or that's where we are. As He is, so are we in this world. Like the lady who was diagnosed with uh, the tumour in, uh, in her breast. She, she took this verse that I was preaching on, as He is, so are we in this world. And she, she kept on telling the Lord, Lord, as you are, you are free from, from tumours in your breast. So am I in this world. And went back to the doctor and they cannot find any tumour. Because she took resurrection ground. She took resurrection ground. All right? This is your ground. You have crossed over Jordan. It's the place of blessing. Those who cross over Jordan, the enemy cannot cross over. He cannot. It's all natural. The devil can only affect people who are natural. The curse can only follow and stop at the cross, the place of judgment. You understand? So, hallelujah. Two Aleph Tafs in one verse on blessing. By the way, the other verse about Mount Ebal, the mountain of curse, look at this verse. Mount Ebal, this shall stand above Mount Ebal. There's no Aleph Taf. Next, all the verse, the entire verse of verse 13, there's no Aleph Taf. Is that all? Yep, it's the entire verse. The curse, there's no Aleph Taf. What does that tell you? It tells you that we are now with Jesus. All these six stripes on Mount Ebal that pronounced the curse, didn't they also cross Jordan? But the Holy Spirit did not mention that because He's telling us why they remain on cursed ground and why these six on Gerizim went over. They are now in the blessing ground. When you're on resurrected ground, you're on blessing ground. Amen? Amen? So remember this, when you step up to work, you are a resurrected being. Your body is unresurrected. Whether you, your heart stops beating, you fall asleep in Jesus, but you never die because you stepped out and the first, the first feeling that you have is, my goodness! How come I feel so alive? Because all the restrictions of the body that you don't, you're not even aware of, all the pains and the aches and the, and the, it's like a machine without oil, you know, you have accepted as normal. But the moment you step out of the encumbrance of your flesh, the first thing you feel is that, my goodness, I feel so alive! And then you look down there, say, who is that? Oh my goodness, it's me. <laughs> and then you say, you know, you start realizing, if this is death, somebody has sold me a lie. I, 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 I feel so alive. And rightly so, because this is eternal life. And you won't be unclothed. The Bible says you will receive a brand new body when Jesus comes again. So those who have gone on before, they will also receive when Jesus comes again. And we who are here, when He comes again and we are alive, we receive a new body. So either way, you will not go up to heaven with the old body. The old body go a few feet in the air or is so scared. So He must give you a brand new body. Amen? A body that will never grow old, never decay, never die. A body that will, I said never grow old never decay, and never die. A body, when Jesus, bought, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says our body will be like His body, glorified body, but He still can eat. They gave Him a, a honeycomb and fish, and He ate. Good news, Singaporeans. You can still eat in the new body. Amen? But, but just let you know that marriage supper of the lamb is not lamb. It's just the supper eating something else. Not The lamb is the host. It's the Lord Jesus hosting us. Okay? <laughs> Amen. And know this, everything you consider a pleasure and a joy, think about it, who gave it to you? Who gave you that, that, that fun, that those functions to enjoy? Like for example, your taste, for example, your tongue. All right? You have bitter, you have, ta uh, you have sour, you have sweet, and then you have now a brand new one called umami. <laughs> you know, that's Japanese for a certain kind of taste. Uh, uh, you know, people who want to be like uh, uh, sophisticated, they say, ooh, the taste is like umami. Did I get it right? Umami? Right? 
Yeah. So anyway, who gave you the taste bud? God can just give you a, a, a slap of skin in your tongue, all right? Just one taste all the way. You'll never know. You'll never know. Because you are used to it. You, you, you won't argue, you won't complain, even though you're Singaporeans, because you'll never know what bitter is like, because you won't know what sweet is like, because you never taste it. But God is, when God made you, God gave you the function. So never think that for one moment, God will shortchange you. That the world up there, you can't imagine because minds cannot fathom. How can that world up there be lesser than the world down here? When the world down here is temporal and the world up there is eternal. Now, don't take off just yet. Okay? Amen? Don't do crazy things to go there quickly. All right, there's work to be done. Amen? People to bless. Amen? More revelations to learn. Amen? God wants your... your you are no good if you, you go, go there. You can't reach out to people here. You can't bless your colleagues. You can't bless your, your family. You can't, you know, God wants you here. Amen? Yeah, but just want to let you know about God. You know, never, never think of God in a way, don't have a low opinion of God. If I give God everything, He will tell me to go to a place where I don't want to go. Oh, wow, you really think of God so, so good, huh? How can we think of God that way, right? Amen? Praise God. Let me just tell you this in closing. You know how this chapter ends? Go back to Deuteronomy 27. Like I said, bless the people to curse the people that don't appear. Right? Let's finish off verse 14 downwards. And the Levites shall speak with a loud voice and say to all the men of Israel. The Levites is in between, right? Now the Levites will shout and say, Cursed is the one who makes a calf or modern image. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Drop down. Curse is the one who treats his father or mother with contempt. All the people shall say, Amen. Curse is the one who removes his neighbor's landmark. All the people shall say, Amen. Curse is the one who makes the blind to wander off the road. All the people shall say, Amen. So the curses are pronounced and the people said, Amen. And drop down all the way. I just show you because of time. Last of all, verse 26. Drop down, drop down. Curse is the one who does not confirm all the words of this law and all the people will say, Amen. By the way, the last verse is the one that we started off with. Paul quoted this by saying, as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, curse is everyone. He's quoting from this verse 26. Isn't it amazing that the Bible says they were supposed to pronounce the blessings and the curses? But what we found is that they only said, Amen. What we have a record of is that the curses only were mentioned and the people said, Amen. The blessings were never mentioned. Why? Because under the law, under the law, which Israel was at that time, under the law, you will always end up on the curse side. Even though the heart of God is to bless you, Thanks be to God for Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen? Unfortunately, in Singapore, we use the word redeem and the word grace for very, very short duration of time. This coupon can be redeemed. And then you take a ticket, it says what? No. Grace period? How long? Huh? 15 minutes. <laughs> Idea of grace and 15 and all that, you know, it's like only a short time, so you have to go to the Bible. All right? Redemption is forever. Grace is forever. Amen? The law is only for a moment. Amen? 15, 1,500 years from the time of Moses to Christ, and then the law ended. Even the plaster cannot last. Amen? And the plaster I found don't have the writing of the law. It's one corner of the plaster. Amen? So I'm here to tell you, church, when you wake up tomorrow morning, remember what you've learned. Number one, God wants you to live a life of rest, not dis-ease. Remember the God of the underworld? All right? Small G-O-D, according to the Webster Dictionary, is the devil. He wants to attack this all right, means his name. He wants to attack your ease. 
Anything that affects your rest and your ease is not from God. Okay? Number two, I want you to remember this. Okay? God is working for you. Under grace, God is working for you. Under law, you are working for God. So, even the things that you want to do for God, God is working for you. God is working in you. And God is working through you. So, your life is a life of rest. So, rest is not inactivity. In fact, when God starts working in you, through you, like what's happening right now, supposed to let you all go by 10 o'clock, all right? But when God is working in me, through me, for you, amen, we can just go on and on and on. I understand why Paul preached until midnight. Amen? Amen. So it is not, I said all that to tell you, it is not a life of laziness. It's not a life of uh, indolence, okay? Uh, uh, rest is not inactivity. Rest is spirit-directed activity. Amen? When you move, you move with rest and ease. There's a tempo, there's a rhythm, there's a cadence to grace, and it's a cadence of rest. It's a rhythm of rest. So that, that's another thing I want to remember. God is to bless, not to curse. Amen? So in everything that God says and does, ah, one last verse, Joshua 8, 33. Let me show them the verse. Look at this. All Israel with their elders and officers and judges stood on either side of the ark before the priests, the Levites who bought the ark of the common Lord. Okay? Half of them were in front of Mount Gerizim. Half of them, Mount Ebal. We saw the 6-6 six, six as Moses. Look at the last line. That they should bless the people of Israel. When I saw this, I was stunned. It never happened, but it shows God's heart. The whole purpose is to bless the people of Israel. But without Christ, they cannot be blessed. So instead, the Levites pronounced the curse and the people said, Amen. 2 Corinthians 1, one more verse. All the promises of God in Jesus are shouted. Yes. And in Jesus, yes. unto the glory of God by us. Again, all the promises of God are in Him yes. and in Him amen. to the glory of God. When you say Amen, God gets the glory. It's to the glory of God. You know, when people say, well, this promise is only for Israel. No, all all the promises of God in Jesus is yes and in Jesus, amen. Amen. So when you say amen to the blessings, you get it. Amen. Every time you hear something preached and it's good, it's God's blessing, I say amen. God gets the glory and you get the blessing. So someone says, you know, uh, Bible says that, uh, oh yeah, uh, longevity, uh, in those days they live 120 and all that. Even 120 is actually God's pronouncement of judgment. God says, uh, my spirit will not always strive with man. His days will be 120. Even then, let's aim for that. Amen? But someone says, well, it's not meant for you today. That's for Israel. Hey, that was before Israel came, before the time of Abraham. Anyway, all the promises of God in the Bible, all is all. All. Plus the book of maps. All the promises of God in Jesus is? Yes. And in Jesus? Amen. Don't ever forget that. And don't let anyone tell you, oh yeah, uh, there's material blessings for Israel and all that, but not for us today. Say all. all. All the promises of God in Jesus is yes. And in Jesus, amen. Unto the glory of God. God is glorified when you say amen. Poor Israel. Under the law, they cannot say amen to the blessings. And they never uttered the blessings. They were supposed to. Never uttered it. Because under the law, God was demonstrating there can be nothing but the curse. And we are no more under law. We are under grace. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not safe, you haven't received forgiveness of sins, I want you right now, in simple faith, turn to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, I believe. I believe you are that altar friend. He is that burnt offering. He is that peace offering on that cross. We have a better altar. Amen? When God ordained the altar, it's a picture of what God had in mind. The altar is a visual instruction. The cross is the substance, the reality. The altar is a shadow. The cross is the realization. Amen? So friend, at the cross, Christ redeem us from the curse. Many years ago, I asked the question, if Jesus was stoned to death, He would bleed. 
And the bleeding is enough to wash us from our sins. Because the Bible says our sins are remitted by the blood of Jesus. And stoning was the number one execution way for Israel. But then the Bible says, prophesied long before crucifixion exists in Psalms 22 by David, that the Messiah will be crucified. But why must He die on the cross? Because anyone who hangs on the cross is cursed. And if He just shed His blood through stoning, we'll all be safe. But we won't be redeemed from the curse. But then when He was nailed to the cross, He redeemed us from the curse of poverty, from the curse of disease, from the curse of mental depression, amen, from the curse of bringing much, ending up with little. The curse of everything you touch seems to go wrong, amen, to a place where everything you touch prospers, amen. Those who come against you one way, flee before you seven ways, amen. God, God has put you under the blessing, amen. There'll be troubles, but let those troubles be because you witness for Jesus, you testify of His grace, and sometimes we go through a valley, but thank God we are going through with His grace. When David says he went through the valley, he wasn't alone. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Who was walking with him with the rod? To protect him from all the wolves and the staff. The shepherd, for you are with me. You are with me. So friend, I'm not saying that when you're redeemed from the curse, there's no trouble, okay? There may be trouble, but it's not come to stay. It's come for you to go through. The morning is coming. Amen? Lift your hands all across this place. And those of you who have just put your trust in Christ, say this after me. Lord Jesus, You are my Saviour. You are the burnt offering on that cross. I thank You. When Your blood was shed, my redemption was bought. I was redeemed from the curse when you were nailed to the cross. Thank you, there's no more curse in my life because Jesus Christ is my Lord. And when you rose from the dead, I rose with you and in you. I'm now on resurrection crown. I have crossed over Jordan. I'm on blessing ground. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed everywhere I go. Everything I set my hand to, every undertaking is blessed. My children are blessed. Blessed is the fruit of my body. I'm blessed even when I undergo warfare and the enemy come against me one way. They live confused and flee from me seven ways. Amen. The Lord will make me the head and not the tail. I am blessed. I will land. I will not borrow. I'm, I'm the head. I'm not the tail. Thank you, Father. I'm above only and not beneath. Thank you, Father. I am blessed. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a reminder, a reminder again, the Lord just spoke to me and said, remind them also, obey your second reaction. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Blessed by what you've seen today? Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel and never miss a single episode. New videos released daily that will encourage and empower you to live a victorious life. 